All right, I'm rolling and broadcasting. The floor is yours. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the May 20, 2021 TBID uh, advisory board meeting. My name is Amish Patel, I'm the vice chair. Today we have uh, President Nancy Dickinson, Chris Casteca, Terry Ennis, and Joan Solu, and Chair uh, Steve Allen will be joining us shortly. Um, so I believe we have a quorum and call to uh, call to order. Uh, first things, if we can have a moment of silence. Thank you. And now I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me get my screen a little better here. Um, do we have any board member announcements today? None. Let's move on. Any staff announcements? Uh, just a quick note of those that aren't aware, Scott um, won't be joining us. He's currently attending the officer's service uh, in San Luis Obispo. Thank you. Um, Heather, do I state the public comment period? Yes. Um, we will be hosting this special meeting uh, telephonically through Zoom and broadcast live on cable. Um, if you need to access it, uh, it is available on the agenda packet with the link below and the password, or you can call by telephone as well. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda, uh, item A1. We have someone in the, um, that would like to speak oh. public comment. Yes, just a minute and I'll allow them to talk. And Mr. Davis, you can speak now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, again, I appreciate all of you meeting together and moving forward. And uh, the council, especially appreciates the expeditious way that you are moving toward your new model. Um, at the April 27th council meeting, we did have an agenda item where we invited public comments on the, uh, the new model for TBID. And we did have one person who spoke, uh, Chuck Davison, um, I need to check my notes to see if he was in favor or opposed to the model. Oh, it looks as if Mr. Davison did support the five-year model. So, so very good. Uh, that was the only public comment we had. So um, looks as if we continued on schedule. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. And the, any other public nobody, comment? Nobody else in the queue with the hand raised at this time. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda, item A1 approval of the April 15th TBID minutes. I move that we approve the April 15th, 2021 uh, minutes as submitted. All second. Second. All right. And can we, sorry, I blanked, uh, get a 
you want me to do a roll call? Roll, roll call, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, motion by uh, board member Solu, seconded by board member Kostaka. Board member Dickinson. Uh, approved. Board member Ennis. Did she drop out? Is she not here? I'm Hello? here. Oh, there we go. Board member or Vice Chair Patel. Hi. Motion carries. Uh, section B, business items. B1, review of transient occupancy and STR reports. Yeah, I can give a quick update on those. Um, we have our March numbers in. Um, as the board has requested, we have previous years uh, from last year and the prior year to review. Um, March is looking um, ahead of where we were peak two years ago. Um, no great surprise there with the pent up demand that we have. I think the encouraging um, point on this is um, we were up about 2% on occupancy, but our revenue was up quite substantially. So we're seeing a nice initiation from the lodging group in holding rate during these times. So that's an improvement over the past couple of years. That's exciting to see. Um, and also something to keep in mind, we did have um, Easter was a little early this year. So spring break was bleeding into that late part of uh, March. And so you should probably see that counterpoint happen through the April numbers where uh, two years ago, Easter and spring break was about a little later than halfway through April. And so as those numbers come in, we'll keep an eye out for those. Um, on the star numbers, we are, are seeing a little bit of lag on those week to week just based off of the spring break numbers. Um, I have initiated some conversations with lodging. As you may know, STAR is just a snapshot for us about four to five hotel properties that are reporting to those. Um, I'm going to um, kind of have an initiative to try to get as many of our properties reporting to STAR so that we can get a week to week number through these and so that our historical records uh, will be something we can look back on and then start forecasting and then helping our lodging properties a little bit through the yield and rate management um, associated with uh, increasing rate and increasing demand. Thank you, Michael. Um, I know that STAR is a very important metric. Um, and if we were able to include the independent lodging in there, um, would that still be the same case for other uh, cities uh, that are reported on there? Do they have a big um, uh, group set to where independent and the uh, franchise properties both report? Um, that typically is a, a lag that we, we see the franchise properties and upscale properties utilize that at a little different a little different level. Um, while I was at the county, we had about 20 to 30 percent of the total properties reporting into 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 star. And so if I can get that, so we have three, four, five of our smaller independent properties reporting, will just give us a healthier snapshot on how the total group is doing. We do see those numbers on the TOT side of things, but it doesn't give us a total snapshot on how the, the total health is doing on a week to week basis. And then um, ultimately how we're competing against um, comp destinations. Uh, that's where I see the, the benefit of STAR um, to really see how we're, how we're competing against our comp set because we don't get the numbers through TOT from anybody else. Uh, STAR is really the only data metric that we'd be able to um, really have a deep dive into and understand how we're competing with everybody. Um, I, last time I checked about a year ago, STAR did offer a free reporting metric for all properties, so this wouldn't be a financial burden for lodging. They wanted they wanted to go deeper. Um, can't remember the cost. I'm, I reached out to Star to get the, that contact. Um, my contact prior is no longer with Star, and so I'm working through that process, and we'll get that out to all the lodging properties. Then I'll meet with them on an individual basis to understand the importance of that and how they can utilize that for their business practice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Steve. Good morning, everybody. I apologize I was late. Um, I got stuck in some exceptional traffic. How is everybody? Good. Doing well. Good. Um, forgive me, where are we in the agenda? Yep. We're um, 
on B1, I think it is, uh, STAR and TOT uh, reporting. Okay. Um, quick recap, March um, was stronger than 2019-20, uh, so 18-19, um, so all intents and purposes, we're looking like we're uh, for March ahead of where we were pre-pandemic at the moment. There is Easter to take into account. The um, really interesting point is we're only about 2% up on occupancy, but our rate has increased quite a bit, and this is where you're seeing the the, the um, increase really come from on the rate side of things from the lodging community. Um, thank you. And heads up, Michael, you're, it's saying your name is Taylor Slauson. Yeah, I, 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 I was having trouble logging into Zoom, so I had to run into Taylor's office and um, be Taylor for the morning. She's, she's sitting here to give us updates as, as needed. Perfect. I don't know what you all saw, but we saw a surge, you know, after things loosened up and um, for spring break, it was exceptionally busy, but um, things have kind of slowed back down historically to the lull we see before summer. But um, what did you see, Chris? Um, similar. Yeah, it was a crazy, crazy spring, and now we are doing numbers pretty typical to, say, 2018, 2019. It's not above. It's kind of where typical numbers and San Luis Obispo is currently in the orange tier? That is correct, yeah. Do we know when it might transition to yellow? Um, given the time frame that we're, where that we're sitting, um, it could transfer in the next week to two, but there might be a lag on that, and there's a wait for the June 14th date to see what, what ultimately comes out of that. Okay. Any questions, comments on the um, STAR report? Okay. Did, do you have anything further, Michael, on that? Uh, no, I have been talking to a number of the hotels in the area as well, just on trying to get a forecast um, feeling how summer's going. Um, I have heard in the last week or two, summer is starting to uh, pick up, um, and it seems like it's, it's similar to what it was pre-pandemic, although the, the lead time for the summer here does feel a little short, um, and so that's something that we need to take account in the, in the future so that our properties will be able to drive rate during summertime. I can uh, speak on that also. I am still noticing that we're, our numbers for the future are not as strong as they used to be. It still seems like it's a lot more last minute bookings. I think people aren't comfortable booking far out yet. Um, I'm not sure why, but they're not quite there. So, or it may be we have more availability short term than normal. And so people aren't forced to push out. I uh, haven't really figured that one out yet, but I am noticing that say you know June by now should be 60 or 70 or 80 percent booked and it's only 30 or 40 percent booked um at the end of the day it's probably gonna end up similar but it is more or less uh late bookings within the week bookings Michael what is visit slow recommending in terms of cancellation policies are they still recommending that hoteliers be as flexible as possible or are they kind of being a little more stringent now uh, a little more stringent now. The, the, the travel sphere is the gaining confidence, so they're um, not expecting, you know, we don't know what the future holds, but all intents and purposes, but we're not seeing, um, you know, the, the lockdown that might happen in the future. So things are looking like we're, we're holding the cancellation policy, whether that's your 48 hour or 24, whatever your, your organization is holding, is what they should, you're, you should be back to standard. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. John? Yeah, even though there's <clears throat> there there seems to be a lot more travel going on, uh, one of one of the things that I was reading was explaining that um, while while you see the the people and the volume increase, what you're seeing is a lot of pent up demand for old travel. In other words, people using airline vouchers from trips that they had booked within the last you know eighteen months that were canceled because of COVID. Um, people using their hotel vouchers that when they canceled, they were given a voucher instead of, you know, like a, a complete refund or something like that. So there's a lot of that trend going on too. So while there's a lot of pressure, I, in, in some regards, there's a lot of pressure on the travel industry right now. It's, um, 
it's I guess what I'm trying to say is it was it, it was previously booked or previously paid for, so it's it's it, some of it is not new volume of travel. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say. Yeah. And they're having a they're having such a trouble in large cities. We need to remember how blessed we are to, although it's a, a drive market and gas prices are going up and you can't find a rental car anywhere. You know, Morro Bay. Uh, or San Luis Obispo County is a unique place in that we don't have any really large, dense metropolitan areas. They're suffering so much in, in major markets in this country. I, I think we're gonna have our, our area come back and I think we're seeing that with our March numbers much quicker. Uh, Oh, uh, one more idea on that from my side is that I find it interesting that I feel like our foot traffic in town looks like middle of summer. I mean, I, I, and our hotel numbers are not middle of summer numbers. So I think a majority of our travelers right now are not staying tonight. You know, they're, they're feeling it out. They're going out for day trips and then heading home. Uh, my hope is that that will soon be turning into increased hotel nights. I, I'm confident it is, but if not, if it's going to stay at these percentages, by the time our hotels are full, you might not be able to walk down the streets. There is so much foot traffic. And that's what I'm seeing along the Embarcadero. I don't know if you all are seeing the same. Well, again, we, we still have a lot of space on the Embarcadero that used to be for foot traffic that's being used for dining right now. So it, it really does make it look more uh, impacted than it may otherwise look. I mean, when you have half your, or even a quarter of your space pulled out of, of something, it, it makes a huge difference. And I, I think you know part of that might be also what we're seeing. We, we see this and we think, golly, town is so crowded. People are walking in the streets. It's so crowded, but Really, we have you know quite a bit of space taken up for outdoor dining still right now. So, and maybe that that may change in June. Who knows? So, Chris, I just up to foot uh, traffic on the Embarcadero, and going along with that, uh, there does seem to be quite a bit of last minute uh, bookings that happen in the evening, um, just from people that have. Uh, explored Morro Bay and have gone dining, spent time out at the beach, um, and have decided that they do want to stay just because it's got late in the evening. Mm -hmm. That's um, good. And, and something on the foot traffic, I met with the rivalist, the, the company who does all the rival data for the county, and um, they're going to put together a proposal for a port specific to Morro Bay, but we are also a city that sees majority of the bleed through from those that are staying elsewhere in the county to come day visit to Morro Bay. And so not that we're competitors with there, but there's an, you know, an opportunity there that, that guests that are traveling to the area to see Morro Bay, how do we convert them to our guests? Um, is that is the, the big question on this. That's an interesting statistic, Michael. Where are they staying? I mean, I, I would think they would be staying in Morro Bay and maybe going inland to go wine tasting and things like that and coming back to Morro Bay, but it sounds like it's opposite. Yeah, it's it, it's a little bit opposite. I can, I'll can send that report out to everybody to look at. I was um, interested to see, you know, some places like um, Cayucas, Cambria, we're getting almost 60% bleed through on day traffic from those areas to us. Um, and then from city of San Luis Obispo over as well, I want to say it was uh, 25 to 30 percent of those that were that that data metric is saying they're housed there, that they're coming over for the day trip. So, you know, we're part of the spoke, not necessarily part of the hub um, currently in that in that booking cycle, um, as far as what I'm reading off the arrivalist data. Interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments on the TOT report? Yeah, Michael, were we later than maybe some of those other communities in, in reaching out to travelers, or were we all kind of on the same page? No, we're, we were a little later. I've um, had meetings with City of Slow, Pismo, um, Tascadera, most of our other DMO partners. Most of them launched campaigns. We're doing uh, marketing in the wintertime, um, early spring period, where we launched late spring, and so we were a little behind. Um, on um, that outreach effort. So yeah, that, that is one factor to, to think about. So 
So is there a lesson there that we need to make up for lost time or what's your recommendation? Yeah, well, we can't really go back in time, um, but being being ahead of the curve, I think what we're doing right now, um, and this is something I'll speak with, do it, what we're doing right now, turning on our social cycle and then getting back in the game, we're starting to see some good results from there. Um, I received a proposal for the next 10 weeks as we work through the transition process from mental marketing to open up more digital marketing, which we haven't, haven't been doing. Um, and then that we will be then in the similar um, cycle that the rest of the destinations are, are are currently working through. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else before we transition to B2? Public comment. Oh, thank you, Heather. Um, AGP, any public comment? No, sir, not at this time. Great, thank you. Then we will transition on to item B2, update on the Morro Bay bid conversion process in consideration of proposal for transition support services. Yep. Thank you. Um, as Red mentioned, a council member Red mentioned, um, Chuck Davidson did speak at the at the council as the only public comment. We did have some written comments. Thank you, Stephen Joan, for those. Uh, we worked very hard to. Um, we we had about five protests leading into that from the short term vacation rental community. We were able to overcome those, so we did not have um, public comment from there. We were able to, um, you know talk them through the process. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion, as you know, that this was an additional 3%. Um, now that they understand the transition of the organization, uh, the short-term vacationers that we spoke with are sound for all intents and purposes on, on board. Uh, there are a couple, um, not necessarily issues, but some things that we could support the vacation rental community, whether that's Airbnb collecting taxes for the city, um, and then also the, the the licensed rentals versus unlicensed rentals um, to make sure that there's a, a, a fair playing field for the short-term vacation rentals. Um, as far as the transition currently going, uh, yesterday we received our corporate ID number uh, from the state for our nonprofit status. So that will start uh, the dominoes that we've been putting in a place uh, to get our get into the insurance portal to start that process uh, for the organization. I uh, met with the accountant this week, and now that we have our number, I'll meet with the accountant again. We'll open up our books and start our budget process. Uh, we have been putting together budget numbers, but we haven't really had the process to be able to utilize the accountant with on that. Um, also on the insurance side of things, Morrison Garitano, who's, who we'll be looking to work with, uh, they also offer HR support. Um, we're working through a number of the documents for the for the new organization, so the employee handbook and and those pieces. So we're utilizing SlowCal's resources on that. They've had all their documents vetted through attorneys, and so we're um, working to that so that makes um, so it fits into the visit Morro Bay um, new organization of the Morro Bay TBID. And then we also have finalized the bylaws um, for the organization, so that'll start the start the piece that we can start um, working on looking at the next board, the, the next level of board of directors for the next um, for the next steps of the organization. Michael, so the directors have a better, you know, visual of how this is working. You're currently sharing office space in the city building with the chamber. That's correct. Um, the city manager deservedly is transitioning out so much of his time that he graciously spent with us over the past 12 months. Yes. How many hours um, a week approximately are you spending on, you know, more of a T-bid business? 35 to 40. Um, if I'm not working through the documents and I'm doing outreach to local partners, activities, um, getting a full scope on the, the tourism ecosystem of Morro Bay. So as this new organization opens that we have a holistic view with the whole community so that moving forward that we're all working together to really improve more bay so about 35 to 40. great and as far as we know the city's fine with us using the office space for a period of time until we get acclimated here that's correct um speaking with scott at this the scott city manager um he is okay we've um verbally agreed to a 12 month um 12 month process to be in this building with the city. Um, we're working out what that price structure looks like. I do not feel it's um, 
you know, a, uh, a current need for us to go out and get a new office space given the client, the current climate of the industry. I don't want to put the organization and expose risk of having a lease and then something happen during this time frame. And the city has been gracious enough to allow us to stay in this office and work through that pricing. And it will be very affordable um, given what Scott has told us. We don't have an actual number. He's working through that currently. And I, I will inform you guys as that happens. And no conflicts that you're seeing because we're trying to be independent, yet we're still sharing space with the city? doesn't feel like there's currently any. I think there's um, the city sees the, you know, the resource that it is and has confidence in the new organization to be able to be housed here, to get a good foothold and a good starting point for the next five years, get us through the, this current question, like I said, of the climate of the industry. And then once we come out of this year, and things start to look a bit more normal next year, and then we'll have a, a little bit more normal budget cycle and an understanding of what revenue will look like. So yeah, there doesn't seem to be any conflict currently. And it seems like a hundred years ago, but there was a time where we were, I think we, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, we were even negotiating on a space down by the Embarcadero that would be more of a tourism visitor center with better visibility. But you know, obviously that's a conversation for a different time. Uh, correct. Yeah, that was something that uh, Jen was putting together and uh, didn't happen. And thank goodness, because who would want to lease right now uh, over the last over the last years? So good thing we whiffed on that. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, any other questions, comments for the transition? Nancy, you got anything? Okay. Um. If there's no other comments, we'll open it up for public comment, AGP. Uh, no, sir, not at this time. Okay. Then that will lead us to B3, update search engine marketing strategy and social influencer. Yep. Um, so we've got a couple new reporting back. So as you, as you remember, on the March 18th meeting, um, approved some new marketing um, through events marketing on that SEM and social influencer. Um, we have contracted with Locally and launched the Google, Google AdWords campaign. Um, about 50% of that campaign was seeing um, a very solid click-through rate. Uh, industry average is uh, typically 1.9, um, uh, roughly around there. We're seeing some really good traction on about 50% of that. Uh, the other 50% we're not seeing much traction. Uh, we're working with Locally on how we can really fine-tune those. Um, whether we need to keep those live or just focus on what's working for us. Um, and so that's just something with the new reporting that we have, something we've got to work through with them on a week-to-week, month-to-month basis. Um, social media campaign, um, first round of boosting, the, the report is there. So we've got some really good numbers coming through the boosting campaign. This boosting campaign will um, continue through June uh, based off of this proposal. Um, we are working with them on the social media side. Prior to um, coming on board, our social media was more general, iconic photos, uh, wasn't really locally based or um, you know local events if we have them or current events that are happening. One highlight was Highway 1 opening. I uh, wasn't on the radar. That ended up being our largest, um, our largest social media share. Uh, we are working on um, some social media pieces. So right now, the salmon are running. That's um, something that's relatively um, specific to our region. Doesn't happen every year. And those type of activities, we really need to capitalize on as they're coming through. So we're working on that. Um, and then um, as far as the influencer um, goes, uh, we're working with locally to bring in a couple influencers on a family base, on an activity base. They've sent us. They're going to be sending us um, this week a couple influencers to pick out. And so we'll have them in market uh, June 10th and 11th. During that time, we've also contracted with Locally to um, develop some new social media assets for us. We've got um, a little older asset, um, asset um, collection, so we do need to refresh that. So while they're in market, they're going to put together a, a sizzle reel for Instagram for those that aren't. Uh, familiar with that it's a multi-picture kind of collage that goes through and we're going to be putting some social media videos through for us um they're seeing some great traction on video versus um the the picture base so these type of content uh we didn't have access to prior and so we're developing those as we go along 
Yeah. Michael, um, middle marketing historically came and presented to the board maybe once a quarter. Is it possible to have them come again virtually and give us an update as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I can have that. At, I can have them come in at the next meeting, and then. Um, yeah, and then they're also putting together our annual report, although there isn't, you know, there isn't much that we did throughout the year, but they are putting our annual reports together, and so that will be delivered by the end of June for us as well, just so that we're staying by the bylaws of the previous organization so that we have a, a clean subset that happens. Uh, Michael, are you seeing um, social influencers reaching out to you or travel writers at at a higher clip. I know us, you know, we're getting quite, maybe it's just because we haven't had it in so long, but you know, we're getting a couple of people a week reaching out, you know, asking to come through and, and, you know, looking for a free night stay or a couple yeah. nights, but also to report on the area. So it looks like those people are out there and ready to come back. I didn't know if they were reaching out to, if they had a direct access to you. Not, not currently. That's something that we're working through. Um, the county does send us um, opportunities as they come through and they see fit for that. So SoCal sees those. I don't think we're, I'm currently in a portal for them. So I am working to get into that portal with uh, a couple of companies that uh, put those on. Um, I'm not listed on the website. Taylor is. So as those come through, Taylor has, has, uh, has those and then we work through the process with them. Haven't seen much um, to, to direct tomorrow day. Um, coming out of the marketing retreat uh, with SlowCal about three weeks ago, um, the, um, they were talking about that this is just now starting to come come back alive. Everyone's ready to start travel, and travel influencers and um, media are starting to get into the funnel again. So this is this is a little slow for us right now, it seems. Terry. Can you hear me okay? I'm having issues with my microphone. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if it's possible to get a social influencer or um, whoever to stay at a vacation rental to give a different type of experience as well. Uh, absolutely. Um, that is one of the, on the list for those, especially on the family side of things. Um, yeah, we do have um, yeah, a, hit, a hit list for where the social influencers to stay. Yeah, absolutely. That cross, that cross that cross promotion um, with short term vacation rentals right now seems to be leading the charge. We need to showcase um, those and then also really bolster what the hotels are 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 seeing and what they need. Uh, the influencers really need to show what you know the activities that are here to do and the reasons to stay in Morro Bay, and then then uh, from there really highlight the places that they can stay and enjoy the area. Absolutely, Michael. Um, if we have someone reach out to an individual hotel directly, would you like us to pass that information on to you? Or is that a value? How, how would you like to see that handled? Yeah, ultimately, you know, if they're reaching out direct, that's something that individual properties can handle on their own. But where it's helpful for us is to have a list of those so that we can cross-reference as their lead. Let's say they're coming in market this quarter and then for some reason they reach back out in a quarter. We don't necessarily need that same influencer in market you know, two quarters in a row, uh, depending on what traction, but it does help us having a list of who has been in market for us. So as everybody's reaching to us, we can kind of cross-reference on, on that and make sure that we're capturing the, the full picture of what the different influencers offer or the media offers. Yeah. Because what I see when the ones from SoCal, it seems like you get when they get a hold of them, um, they run them around the county for you know two, three days and give them a full slate. I was just thinking if they contact the hotel direct, then of course, if they're staying at that hotel, they'll probably be giving some sort of plug for that hotel. But while we have them, it'd be great if they were in contact with your office so that you can, you know, send them on a whale watching boat or you know, all the stuff that you do to give them that full experience to make a better picture of Moral Bay. Absolutely. Because I don't think as an I know we don't, we don't set them up with anything other than our property. So we don't, you know, set them up with other things. So I, I should be direct notice to you, I would think. Yeah, please do. Any other comments on the marketing report? Amish? Uh, yeah, quick question for Michael. Uh, is there a reason mental marketing is subcontracting via locally um, for the AdWords and uh, influencers are not part of their scope of work. 
It, it is part of their scope of work, but in the in their agreement, there is a subcontractor um, subcontractor line for them for them to be able to do that. They're not necessarily a specialist agency when it comes to all the pieces. They're a connector agency, is what I'm seeing, and uh, we will be we are you know starting to go through the RFP process. Our next agency will be um, you know there might be some subcontracting, but most of the agent the next round of agency I'm looking to have all of that in house. It does create a little bit of a communication, lengthy communication to get a lot of these um, pieces moving. So I'm looking for the next agency to be able to have a majority of that those pieces in house. Yeah, great. Joan, I've never heard you so quiet. Any comments? <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here thinking about the RFP and the RFP process and thinking about how much there is to be done and how much is already being done. Yeah, we're a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of what we were discussing, how we, how Michael said, you know, we got out there in spring starting to market again and, and mostly social and, and Facebook and everybody else in the county was out in front of us. And, you know, I'm thinking about all the people who come here from San Luis Obispo and everything they were saying and wondering how we get our marketing especially if it's mainly social, uh, to convert those people and get them back here. And I, I hear what Chris is saying about all these, you know, folks contact um, your individual hotel and they want to stay in your hotel and you don't have the bandwidth to set them up with uh, whale watching trips and all that. And I, I you know, I, I can't wait to see this tourism marketing taken to the next level in the next six and eight months where we become, where Michael and Taylor in the office become the hub and all these little folks that we're talking about here seem like something that was so far away and so far in the past because it's working smoothly, right? And the RFP is gonna be a big, big deal to get through and uh, and get the right team set up that's gonna support whatever mechanism that the lodging industry, the vacation rentals and the hoteliers wanna take this to. I think we're doing a great job right now with everything that, that uh, has been thrown at this business community in the past little over a year. I, I think that we're doing a great job coming back from it, much, like I said, much better than a lot of other communities. But I also think it's a long road ahead of us and, and you just have to be patient yeah. and you have to keep the path. And I, you know, I'm excited about some of the stuff that I'm already seeing come out of the office. I sent Taylor an email saying thank you for sending information out to the hotels. There was a, a tourism resources or insights uh, email that everyone got, did you all get that? And it listed on there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, it listed on there um, all, kinds of, all kinds of resources for the business community in Morro Bay. Are you hiring? For the first time ever, the tourism office asked you guys if you were hiring and wanted to provide help. That's a big deal. So I, don't, I, you know, sometimes it's not just about the marketing that we're doing. Getting all these people here is terrific, and I want it to happen. But it's all the support stuff, and I'm really, really encouraged by all of it, by the numbers, by everything. Super good comments. Thank you. And that, in, that industrial knowledge is something that we take um, as we're doing outreach to the individual partners as well to make sure that they're receiving the receive receiving the um, that information and understanding how to utilize it as well. Um, I think a lot of times um, owner operators are busy doing everything and then just taking you know, 30 minutes to an hour to talk through some things that they can help um, kind of tighten up their business is something that um, I think this this organization should be helping with something that I, I truly love to do as well so yeah. yeah I see that not only Michael as you know we market out to the tourism in this to the tourism to the tourists to travelers we're marketing to travelers but that kind of touch point you're marketing directly to your your industry partners and that's where you can make some of the biggest differences to to create demand is 
by providing resources for training and hospitality and all of those things. And, and I, I can see it coming together and it just, it's exciting. We need, we need, we need to convert some reason to have it happen all day and that's delivering on a just, just um, satisfaction. And so the more our partners understand how to deliver that, the more we're just gonna get repeat guests and more people talking about Marl Day. Yeah, that's that, that's that organic part of marketing that I think gets lost in, in the ecosystem. Any other comments on the marketing report? Okay, AGP, any public comment? No, sir, not at this time. So that will bring us to declaration of future agenda items. Does any board member have anything they'd like to discuss at a future meeting? Is, is our next meeting our last meeting? I have to ask a question. I probably, I don't know whether I'm asking Heather or Michael or who I'm asking or Stephen. Is our next meeting then, which would be our June meeting, is that our last meeting as the, the city operated to the board? That, that, that is correct. Um, if there is a special meeting that's needed, but right now it's not looking for any sunset voting, but right now, yeah, our last meeting for the advisory board on the previous Morrow Bay Tourism Improvement District will be that day. Uh, we're working through Civitas right now on the new board of directors and seeing if we can't have a special meeting of the new board of directors for the new organization sometime in June so that um, what we're working on in the future that we can make some decisions on the next organization. And so when we come to July 1st, we can get the ground running. So that's a little unclear right now. We're waiting on Civitas to give us some, some answers on that. Michael, it would be nice just to let the board members know, you know, what would be expected of them. I'm a little confused. I guess I know that there's some disclosure requirements and training requirements annually due to the affiliation with the city, I assume those types of things will drop off? That's correct, yeah. The, 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 those type of pieces are, will, will drop off. There will be, um, I'm not totally familiar. I was just looking through those. Let, let me get back to you, Steve, but on the disclosure level, for, because, of, because it was city and government, that will be different than the nonprofit private sector. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd like to just get input from everybody, you know, again, as a, separate business item in a future meeting you know what do you guys want the board to look like in terms of meetings do we want to keep it on zoom is that more convenient for people do you like meeting in person um you know hopefully by the next meeting time we will be very close to the yellow tier and i know a lot of groups are starting to meet in person again but you know that may or may not be the best thing for this board um so if somebody feels strongly about that please let michael or myself know and um, I do think we need to start planning and speaking about events, especially off-season events. You know, maybe they're for 2022, but you know, we need to figure out which vendors are still actively in the market, who's gone away. Um, that's a very important piece of our off-season business. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we had talked about that previously, having that as a future agenda item, and uh, you know, getting just oh, somebody to touch base, and I with all those folks, and there's a lot of them, you know, there's a lot of them. So yeah, uh, Erica and I have been having some. Oh, Terry, go for it. I was just going to say, it was mentioned to me by a local um, business here that they used to have um, bus trips that came into town, and they would stay overnight, and that generated quite a bit of business. It was actually for the Chablis, um, and they would stay overnight, and um, she said that has completely dropped off. So I was wondering if that's one of the things you could check into. Yeah, I, I have some insight into that. Um, for, for when I came on board, uh, SoCal, the county tourism visit, had two, two trade shows that they attended. Um, those are the trade shows I used to attend. Um, I've reached out to all of the partners um, in that industry that I've had over the course of the last 10 years. Uh, bus tours are coming back on the domestic side. Um, more so right now, of course, with the international travel, but we will be in line um, to pick up that international travel as that starts opening up. Right now, there's um, right now we're looking at potentially some summer travel happening on the international basis, but really targeting fall. And then where we need to be in line is the booking cycle for 2022 that will start in October, November, December through that time frame for the following year. So yeah, the tour buses are, are high on my priority. 
Um, now that uh, on the domestic side of tour buses, typically those are um, active seniors who are out and about. Now with vaccines happening, talking to those uh, companies, we should start seeing some opportunities come in for fall. Uh, the booking windows tend to be 12 months, eight months for those. So yeah, we're we're looking at getting those getting those back and getting those robust as well. Um, there is some insight coming out of a couple of our competitive destinations that they were so strong this last year um, domestically that they might not be looking at international, uh, which actually lines um, gives more of a uh, an ability to pick up some of that um, some of that international travel that some of our comp destinations don't think they need right now. So yeah. Remind me, is there supposed to be some iteration of the bird festival, or is that not going to happen? Doesn't sound like right now, doesn't sound like there's currently really any hard events left for this year. Uh, there's too much exposure for those organizations that if something needs to cancel, um, they're running on limited budgets right now. So we would hope to have something in fall um, if we could, but right now it does not look like events in the, in the future for this year right now it has a big question mark on it. Um, Work on the program committee for the third festival for January for Martin Luther King weekend and they're planning. They are planning for for next year. Okay. I apologize on on the, the calendar time. For Martin Luther King weekend. It may be you know I mean it's all like everything. They're they're planning a smaller event, um, but they're currently planning to have it um, with contingency. Uh, I, I apologize for that. I had my dates mixed up for that. Okay. Uh, Michael, um, this came up to me this talking with somebody this past week, and I know with so much going on this next month, it's not that, but to plant a seed for the future, um, I've always kind of had a focus on midweek instead of weekend. Um, I think the, the big events on weekend are important because they're great, fantastic photo ops uh, that are for long-term marketing. But almost along the lines of it, this sounds a little bit, you know, a Taco Tuesday. But you know how that's a term. I just thought if Moral Bay created their own, you know, something on Monday, something on Tuesday, something on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all local through the restaurants, through the parks, through the beaches, just what the theme day is Monday through or Sunday through Thursday. That's something that every hotelier now has to send out to their client base or to hand them upon check in or something to allure people out. Oh my gosh, I love you know, crab, you know, crab, they have Thursday crab days, um, something along those lines that's inexpensive marketing. It's just something we can always throw out to our individual client bases to lure them to come for weekend stays and midweek stays. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, on the event side of things, uh, SoCal is putting together a countywide event strategy so that we're not realizing each other um, during time frames and hopefully we'll have uh, uh, a county-wide calendar. Um, so that's something that they're going to be sending an MOU to all the destinations that will work through on um, the board level. And then ultimately, it sounds like it's going to have to go to the city for approval. Uh, but look for that. Too. I had to follow with them yesterday on that. So look for that event strategy to come through. Um, ultimately, we'd like to align with those. I like this theme piece. Um, you know, just in just in terms of, of events on the hotel. When I was a hotel, I liked them in our shoulder season, drivers when we needed them. Uh, busy season is busy season. We do marketing and we do these theme days that don't really take a lot of um, dollars for them, but give a sense of um, more personality to the area. Um, so I like that. So look for that MOU and some of that talking points coming up for that, that county-wide event strategy. Great, thank you. Any other future agenda items? Okay, I don't think I need public comment on this, but um, if there's nothing else, we will adjourn the meeting. It's 9.51. Thank you all for participating and stay safe. We'll see you soon. Thank you, be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.